Hello, everyone, and thank you for attending today's webinar, Jumpstart Your Company's Growth, Eliminate Barriers, and Increase Profitability. I'm Billy Lute, Associate Editor with Solar Power World. Now, before we get started, there are a few things you should know. This webinar will be sent to all registrants so you can view it again. Slides are available to view at any time via the resource widget at the bottom of your screen. Submit any questions related to today's webinar via the Q&A widget. We will try to answer these during the webcast. If we do not get to your question, our presenters may reach out to you after the broadcast. And finally, if you are watching this on demand, you can still use all of these features. So let's get started with today's webinar. Jumpstart your company's growth. Eliminate barriers and increase profitability. Today's speakers are Jan Rippengale, co-founder and CEO of Blue Ban Banyan, sorry. Aaron Casillas, National Logistics Director at Titan Solar Power, and Justin Coonrod, National Install Manager at Titan Solar Power. And now I'm gonna turn it over to Jan. Thank you, Billy. It's really great to be here today. We are really excited to talk with you about everything that, that is going on in the solar industry and what you can bring to solar installers. I wanted to open by talking about the general environment that we're in with all of the changes with the coronavirus and climate change in general. We It is interesting to notice that we are still adding 18 gigawatts of solar capacity this year. And so as a whole, we are still succeeding as a solar industry in deploying more solar than has ever been done before. So this is a positive trend and we've done it despite the adversity of coronavirus. There are a lot of opportunities every time there's growth and getting reducing those barriers to growth is literally what this is about today. So I wanted to talk about the biggest cost decline opportunity is soft costs. And I know that we've all heard this for a decade or more, but it continues to be remain high and it's due to customer acquisition costs and then inconsistent building codes and permitting practices. And so we not only want to process things consistently ourselves, but we'll also look at the broader solar industry to see what we can do to make these processes easier moving forward. And of course, the bottom line is that the industry as a whole is expected to have 17, over 17% 17 cost adjusted growth rate for the next five years. So we are well positioned as an industry for growth altogether. So the question becomes, how can you individually make use of that opportunity? So I'd like to talk about Blue Banyan. We are an award-winning um, company that is working with NetSuite and also just doing system design in general. The main point that I'd like to add is that we are a mission-driven company and we have assessed that climate change is the greatest root cause of human suffering that we're gonna see in our generation. So the way to address that, that we have assessed is to do our best to help installers deploy more renewable energy. Because when you've got a problem, the first step is, of course, to stop digging. So literally, our client success determines our success. Which is why we were super excited when we started working with Titan Solar Power. They are an industry leader, and they partner with like-minded solar sales companies and dealers to deliver world-class installations with industry-leading customer experiences. They are absolutely innovative and it has been acknowledged with their awards. They were the number one top residential con contractor in Arizona and Nevada in 2020. They were the top solar rooftop contractor in 2019 and 18. And the, in addition to being an amazing um, installer, they're also number 208 in inks 500 fastest growing companies in 2018. So they are absolutely making an impact beyond the solar industry into broader businesses altogether. And they're really fun to work with. So the Arizona Business Journal gave them the best company to work for. 
and the most admired company. So all of these together have made Titan Solar Power really wonderful for us to work with and talk to you about how we address these challenges to eliminate barriers and increase their profitability. Um, it was really exciting, which we're going to cover today. So Aaron, how, where did we start? Thanks, Jan. Um, jumping in here, uh, Titan's been growing at an extreme rate for a long time now. Um, we've been growing over 100% annually, and that growth has never slowed down. We're continuing to grow all the time. Um, you know, from when we were a smaller company many years ago, um, we started out with a smaller project management system um, with a few different separations for different applications that we used, whether it was accounting, project management, file storage, different things. And um, over time, that system um, wasn't able to keep up with the growth that we were experiencing. We had many many issues with um, adding in fields, trying to get metrics out of the system, trying to get analytics in order to um, increase our efficiency overall. And um, within it, we had some raw limitations. Um, we weren't able to uh, define enough roles and manage users in a way that we wanted to on the administrative side. Um, the system also um, was a little bit error prone due to its separation between multiple applications um, that caused us to have some um, difficulty getting stats out of it and difficulty doing um, and resulted in us having to do processing of data outside of the application itself. So overarchingly, um, in order to get the data and analytics we were looking for, we needed to combine our systems and get things all in the same place. So, 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 so this yeah. is these place, this is, so Titan started out in what we call, at Blue Banyan, we call it the hairball stage. This is a natural and often necessary growth stage because when you're smaller, it is perfectly appropriate to have different tools for different systems. Um, and, and that is, it's more important just to get started and see if you've got something viable. But as you grow and you've got these incompatible applications that can't talk to each other, you inevitably end up with different versions of the truth. So the people in sales can be thinking that they're doing really great while accounting is struggling and not understanding how the cash flow is supposed to work. And getting everyone onto the same version of truth is the first step to being really able to scale and collaborate within your organization. Fragmented data is the enemy that is the thing that we need to normalize so that everyone is is operating on that same on the same basis and we've got common statistics and common ways of of looking at the world so that we can actually measure if we're making improvements or not so in the hairball stage it's actually okay cuz you can talk and you've got heroes that can work between everybody to make things kind of smooth over the rough spots but as you grow and that volume increases any of your process weaknesses just get exacerbated and probably your heroes are going to get really tired. So it's, it is important that as you scale, in order to be able to scale, you've got to work out those process problems. And of course, the manual calculations, there's a lot of math that gets done, particularly in solar installs and doing these things manually inherently leads to errors. And as we're talking with the different people over time, and we've got adders and commissions and all of these nuances, getting these calculations done manually or separately in Excel, where that may or may not have the same source data, can cause a lot of difficulties. So fundamentally, the hairball stage is an important and necessary stage, but it, unless you can transcend the, the lack of real-time visibility in your overall company operations, you're not going to be able to scale in the way that you could otherwise. So what do we need? We started looking out there to find a system that allowed us to do everything in one place. That was a, a big aspect of what we were looking for. Um, we wanted it to be able to handle um, whatever our growth is, whether we continue to grow at our rate that we have been or double our rate triple our rate, whatever it is, we wanted to be able to scale within one system, um, 
endless number of users, documents, projects, um, putting all of our accounting in the same place, all of our transactions was definitely the features that we were out there looking for. Um, within the database, we also wanted strong administrative capabilities um, and security. So we were looking for something that would allow us to create our own custom permissions, our own custom user roles that allowed us to um, make the system fit our needs as opposed to um, us fitting the system's requirements. Um, within that, we, we have a really complicated industry where there's variance in our different uh, utilities, jurisdictions, states, um, and we needed to be able to account for any type of project that we were looking to do. Um, so we were looking to build out templates and make adjustments to those templates based off of criteria. Um, so that was a big aspect of what we were looking for. And we needed more metrics. We wanted to be able to uh, get real-time data in order to make better decisions and have better overviews of both the company as a whole and different segments. You know, whether we're looking at individual markets, roles, or individuals themselves, we needed to be able to hone in on areas of the company and make decisions based off of that. Sorry. So, so Titan selected this NetSuite's Solar Success solution, and NetSuite is a foundation that is fundamentally an accounting layer. It's a, a tool that has taken companies from startup all the way through to IPO. So it had the robust foundation that Titan needed to move forward with the modern database. Solar Success added the project templates, the ability to change those templates based on, on the criteria and the metrics and, and collaboration tools that enabled rapid issue, issue resolution. And fundamentally, we have determined that the, it's not that you're going to, well, actually I take that back. You may well have fewer issues when you've got project templates and your clear process queues. But the thing that really reduces the cost and makes this more cost effective to do, but also just more fun to do your job, is that you get faster issue resolution. That you can just get an issue and handle it. It's very satisfying as you gamify the system. So NetSuite was the foundation. They are um, well established in everything that they needed that we needed as a technical foundation to, to move Titan forward. And then we add in these collaboration tools and the process tools really help Titan sing. So this is the overall plan. The first piece that I would like to show you is that fundamentally you're getting the overview of how your business is doing as a whole. So you will have common on this accounting foundation you will have a common view of your profit your revenue and expenses you can do deferred revenue which is a piece that you will as you grow you're going to want to do more gap standard accounting and defer the revenue so you can recognize it at the same time and match and it includes inventory management so you have a full picture of exactly where your resources are allocated right now being able to see your business as a whole enables you to address the very first questions. Are, is our cash flow working? Um, are we making money? And establishes that foundation. If you start with this accounting foundation, which has the accounting rules that are kind of intricate, then it's like building a solid foundation that's, that's laying on bedrock, that you're gonna have what you need when you add on the extra pieces of project management and team metrics and elements that can change over time, and certainly do change over time. I mean, storage has changed every single project template we have. And that's really, really happened in the last year. So by starting on that accounting foundation where the rules are intricate, we are building on bedrock and then we're adding to the house. If if people, and I've seen that people have tried at different points to do it the other way around, where they have their project management system and they try to add on accounting later, and it becomes very top heavy and difficult to manage. So I, we're not gonna talk a lot today about the foundation of, of this accounting piece, but it is actually what the root of what makes everything succeed. 
and then we've got KPIs for each role in the company to see their part. So one of the Aaron, things I wanted to mention and talk about is that um, as we built this out and designed it, we started making clear task queues. And within those queues, we wanted to eliminate work where it wasn't necessary. Um, within all these templates and certain criteria, um, we're able to establish criteria of things that are ready to move forward or an action's ready to happen without a human making a decision on it. When there are certain scenarios that arise that allow us to do something without a human physically having to press the buttons on the keyboard to move that project forward, we started automating it so that the system would simply handle those tasks and eliminate the user work where possible and allow the people to then focus where they need to make judgment calls, where there's uh, newer scenarios or things that are outside of the normal path that uh, require that additional attention. Also, oh, I'm jumping ahead here. Um, Justin, I think you're going to be chatting on some of our performance-based metrics that we're pulling in. Yep. So um, this is one of the the filters that we that Bluebeam added for Titan Solar Power, um, and this is one of those filters that allows us to see on a national level what we're installing per day per branch. Um, it allows us to um, to look and see where we can rank uh, branches uh, against other branches uh, based on how many teams each branch has or each office has. And then um, if you hold like the mouse cursor over each of these these line graphs uh, or bar graphs that are on the, the screen here, um, you can see exactly what that branch is installing that day. Um, used for setting daily goals for branches, um, plus it's, it helps us monitor productivity um, in comparison to the goals that we set forth uh, for each of our branch managers. Um, the next slide here is a um, projects without more work, uh, Mesa by team. This is one that we can use individually uh, by, by branch as well. Uh, we can see how many teams we have in each, each market, each branch. Um, we see what they're installing versus how many of the jobs that they installed go to more work. Um, this allows us um, to, to incentivize the guys um, when it comes time for evaluations for them because we actually have a metric that we can we can rank them to. Um, usually you see who has more work and what teams uh, the, the teams have the most more work. And, uh, we fix that right away as opposed to, waiting uh, and, and seeing it filter down later on uh, when, when the more work gets out of control. So um, by, by eliminating this and seeing this on a weekly or on a daily uh, or even like a, a monthly, quarterly, we can address the issue at hand and fix it fast and efficiently uh, to help reduce truck rolls, um, which in turn the company doesn't want to have a, a second truck roll out to a job that only needed one truck roll. So this is something that, that helps us um, eliminate those and, and make our teams work more efficient. And then, Aaron. So, so I am so glad to to hear that how it's working in the different pieces. Justin is in the root of making the systems actually work day to day, and having these metrics available to give him that feedback warms my heart. So I'm really glad to, to hear how that works. The next piece Thank that <laughs> we'd like to talk about is, is the metrics that we did to reward, reward achievers. So first, we can actually see who the achievers are because we'll pick a different tasks like who's submitting permits and we can rank them when, in leaderboards. This is a concept that came from gaming and does have all of the dopamine rush that not only millennials like, but also us, you know, Gen Xers and probably the baby boomers too, where you can actually see and compete with your friends on on how many permits that you can get submitted. Of course, every person will have different issues and they might be addressing more difficult permits versus easier permits. 
but being able to see these leaderboards gives you the ability to have that visibility. Also, you can group the data any way that you would like. So you could also look at it by branch and or by any other team structure that you might like to look at it. And that gives you the ability to, to play internally with the individuals, but also to play across the different teams and see what barriers there might be in a given state and then get creative about what it is that you're going to do about these. The visibility certainly does show you problems that you're going to fix, but what we have found is most fun is that it gives us opportunity for creative dialogue that people can say, okay, what does Arizona got on Nevada? And you know, Nevada's super cool. So if Arizona can do it, we can do it too. And they can move that forward. So the leaderboards is a metric, but it also gives this gamification effect for the entire company, which is really fun to watch. Chat. This is yeah, the next this element is a of huge, fun. <laughs> yeah, this is a huge aspect of what we do. Um, one of the things that was definitely a requirement when we were looking for our new system and um, Blue Banyan put together um, is Blue Chat. This is a project-based chat feature that allows us to manage all of our communication on a project, actually on the project record itself. So um, we're not having to do communication um, via emails or individuals going back and forth to each other or even group emails. Um, we keep an active individual um, chat channel basically on each one of the projects that's specific to that project and um, and we use we use it a ton as you can see we, we did 167,000 messages last month um, one thing that's great too is that we also invite all of our partners into our NetSuite um, environment so that they're able to see all of their projects and communicate inside of chat with us um, and uh, just based off the percentages we have great adoption we have lots of partners logging in and interacting with us inside of NetSuite. And um, this is essentially where all of our um, employees handle their communication. Um, instead of switching back over to their email account and sending out an individual email, they're tagging partners. Um, tagging is a feature that is shown on top of uh, the little um, demo chat screen there. It's a little at sign. Um, and then someone's name. So you are able to send them emails and notifications through the chat. And it's essentially where anything that goes outside of the, the normal queues and the normal pipeline, um, and whenever there's questions or information needing to be exchanged, we're, we're utilizing chat. Um, Jan, do you have any comments on chat? I, I do. As a CEO, I, I had a mixed relationship with chat initially. <laughs> <laughs> because people would send chat messages and almost use that as an excuse to not need to follow up. So one of the things that we built in is that not only can you chat, you can actually directly create tasks so that they're listed in the chat thread so that you can see that it's happening and they can show up on your task queue of things that it is that you need to get done and that we can be followed up on. So I don't need to chase anybody to know whether or not that task is completed and they're able to have an, an easy to access, clear reminder of something that they need to follow up on, even though they were um, first informed of the issue in chat. This is, this is my favorite feature of how the chat works. Uh, I, the other thing is we've gotten a lot of feedback about being able to update files. So when we do have a file, particularly if it's an image, because a picture is worth a thousand words and you're able to chat about something not being right, just take a picture on your phone, put it up on the chat, and the issue resolution is, is much more rapid. So we have taken the normal chat that you would, you would expect, added it to the specific project that you're working on, and added just a few key features to make it more usable and easier to follow up on. Um, how? So tell me, Aaron, is this something that is important to you guys? You use the task less, but I do see that 20,000 is still a healthy number. Yeah, uh, it's it's used nonstop. Um, a lot of people use the um, task to 
give reminders to themselves so they can get notifications and a day or two to follow up on something. Um, you know, tasks in itself um, are better um, than individual chats because um, they can, you know, store a task and give you metrics based on completing that task, right? Um, outside of that, the general communication and having the feed is, um, is completely necessary to what we do. It allows any employee in our company to jump into a individual project and scroll through the chat to see what, um, what's currently going on with it, if there's communication stuff happening, um, you know, if we're communicating with the uh, sales partner and um, other people within the company, it's all visible for everyone to see. So we can all be on the same page with information on communications. Great. And and with that, I, I wanted to summarize kind of where we, where we started when we were first started working with Titan Solar Power and then how we address those needs. So we started with a platform that had difficulty scaling and needed modern database features and flexibility. NetSuite as the accounting foundation provided that fundamental structure, Oracle's got disaster recovery, all of the different pieces that you need for a modern cloud system. Also the fact that it is based on the cloud gives you the ability to rely on the experts that need to do it rather than making sure that, that you individually, um, the number of servers that I have still seen in closets that are, are running businesses, it gives you that peace of mind that you don't need to worry about it uh, in, with that foundation. We also fundamentally, because it's an accounting system and it's got the math and it's modern, there were a tremendous number of transactions that we were able to automate and calculations that we were able to do. This saved a tremendous amount of time and increased accuracy because we were working from the source data to begin with. The next piece that, that Titan needed was these project templates that clearly showed the required tasks that was adaptable for different states, different AHJs, different utilities. And what we have noticed is since implementation that we've reduced the overhead costs by three to 5%. And by we, it's the entire team has participated in this. I am sure that the software system had something to do with these costs, but as the people looked at the system as a whole and they brought their ideas with a continuous improvement, Titan continues to grow and improve its cost effectiveness because it is such an innovative and fun team where they're working through these issues. So we were able to substantially notice that the per project overhead costs were reduced and that the days from contract to PTO were reduced and that would vary per market, particularly as COVID has made a huge change in how permitting processes get, um, permits get processed. But even with, with COVID, they had a reduction in the number of days from contract to PTO and the process errors went down. And the piece that is the most fun and I think is where when you've got the foundation handled as in any system, you're finally able to kind of take it to the next level and involve everyone creatively in how to solve the problems that they're encountering each day is by giving visibility into what individuals and teams are doing. And with that, you can identify baselines and thresholds of performance that people need to meet and reward the super achievers for what it is that they're contributing. So by having this increased visibility and administrative throughput, we were able to do more collectively with the same overhead budget, which was fabulous. Often I am asked, will this mean that we end up firing a whole bunch of people and we'll have fewer people working at our company? And because we are in a growth industry where 17% you know, growth rates are are healthy and strong, much less 100% annual growth rates. We have found that you end up being able to process more projects with the same team and no one ends up losing their job because there's a system. We end up just processing more and more projects. Is there anything you'd like to add, Aaron? 
that sound? Yeah, I mean, right? overarchingly, um, we're always increasing our goals on, um, you know, doing projects as fast as possible with the most efficient team as possible and, um, you know, finding those scenarios, like Justin said, to reduce truck rolls, to make sure that we're getting uh, projects done in a super quick and super efficient way, um, utilizing, um, you know, the least amount of resources that are necessary. So um, overarchingly, um, you know, everything we do on our side is essentially a way to gain efficiency and to install install more panels and do it quicker. So it's perfect. It's helping with the mission of getting more solar deployed. So with that, I would like to also explain a little bit more about the solar success opportunities that we have with the modern platform to be able to connect with other systems. We are able to connect with specialists in each area of the system to, to move the process forward. So if you are working with a partner that's generating leads, we can hook up with them. We've hooked up with dialers. If you if call centers is a big way that you're handling your process. Uh, we are in the process of integrating with each of these different proposal tools. And that is on the roadmap with the little star. E-signatures are, are DocuSign integrations. So we've done a, a deeper integration with DocuSign so that it connects to the actions. So when something is signed, it'll literally say that the action is complete automatically. And the, the person doesn't need to come back into the system to say that that happened. So Ligo and Salesforce are ways that we connect with other systems that exist. Sometimes you've got a hairball stage, but you need to move it in transitions. And these are tools that we use to help with that. Financiers and the banks, we have an, a loan pal integration that is working now so that you can automatically know when you get NTP, which can accelerate how you schedule your installs. And then you can automatically tell LoanPal when the install is completed, which can quicken the process by which you get funded. So the financier integration, I think, is a key element to expanding our general efficiency as an, as an industry. Payment processing and doing this with email payments and other things really make things easier for people. Site survey tools where you're able to use Eagle View and other drone tools, especially if you've got some HOA and property data so that you know that Eagle View is a good solution for that. Can, per, can also reduce truck rolls. We do store our documents in AWS and we are adding Box um, right now so that you can have as many as you want. You can keep your high resolution photos You can take a picture of your breaker box and then actually go in and read each breaker as you need to. 17 terawatts and the Bodhi software for customer engagement has been a, a really fun addition to our suite as it's a mobile app for the customer to go and see what it is that they're, how their project is moving forward and to feel engaged with their process. The Department of Energy has supported the Orange Button Initiative, and we're going to speak about this more in just a second. But the, the Orange Button is a large initiative funded by the Department of Energy originally and, and run by SunSpec to do data standardization. And one of the key things that we found is that every single one of these guys connecting so far the exception being the ones that are orange button compliant here, have required that you've got your own field names and your own ways of interacting, which has been really challenging. So the, by working with orange button, we're trying to move the whole industry forward so that we can all start talking in a common language and on a common basis. One of the key pieces that we're testing out and in full right now is the AHJ registry where we have been testing and thanks to Titan for partnering with us and helping us run through their historical AHJ assignments for projects. And we have found that we've got over a 98% success rate in automatically assigning the AHJ to the project that is correct 98% of the time. We're working through that last 
some of the times the person made a mistake and some of the times we actually haven't found a time yet that the computers made a mistake, but we're working through that final 2% to see where that's going. <laughs> Again, to help this, the human being not to need to add the AHJ when they don't need to. We're looking to do something similar with products and monthly operating reports for the larger scale projects. We do integrate with different distributors, so you can send them purchase orders and get shipping notices back within the system. RF Smart is a warehouse management for um, being able to go through and manage your inventory. We got field service management tools, monitoring hookups, weather, and all of these specialty data is collected, but then it's brought into the system on the same basis so that your experience when you're looking at it is that it is still a single source of truth and a single piece of truth. So these third party of integrations and roadmaps are here. Aaron, do you have any thoughts about this? Has this been helpful to you guys? Yeah, integrations have been a large topic. Um, we do a lot with our sales partners as well, um, working back and forth to make sure um, overarchingly we, we, if there's information available um, that streamlines people's jobs and what they're doing, we want to take advantage of that. And, you know, as we've been working uh, with Blue Banyan on, and on NetSuite, working through uh, different integrations with different companies, we've been able to um, verify information better and gain information better into our system with less user work going into it. So overarchingly, we want to streamline and get everyone on the same page um, and Often uh, these these different companies um, and resources are, are using different standards for their information. So um, that'll streamline uh, Jan into the next topic, but we're looking to also improve our standards for the stuff that are the stuff that's happening within the industry. Right. And and so the just to let everybody know in case you weren't aware yet, we are having um, the Department of Energy is and Sunspec is hosting a webinar on the AHJ registry in particular. And the AHJ registry uses an orange button API, orange button compliant API, to send in an address for any, any property actually, and it will determine which AHJ is, has got authority at that address. So the early adopters include Titan, Solar Power of Oklahoma and Ibsen, Aurora, is very excited about the AHJ registry as they're gonna use it with their permit application development project that they are working on right now. And the solar app project, which uh, we've been hearing about for over five years now, is actually starting to issue their first permits. I'm thinking that we might hear about that in the next week or so. And they're gonna be using the AHJ registry to identify the correct AHJ and also to know whether or not that AHJ does accept solar app permits. And they are also going to have an API so that we can send permitting packages directly from Solar Success um, to the AHJ for the participating residents. Would you like, is there any other thoughts on this that you think we should add, Aaron? Uh, I think you've covered it pretty well. Orange buttons definitely, um, you know, a direction that we want to take to um, simplify these processes and make sure we're we're sharing data in a proper way, or at least a consistent way. So. Exactly. So that this is the the webinar that we'll be presenting. That everyone should sign up if you're interested. And I think my. Lost my deck. Yeah. Did I freeze? Oh. I'm seeing the same thing. Okay. So that'll be coming back. Like it's the... coming back shortly. <laughs> this will be on on Tuesday next week on the 27th. We will have the new deck, the, the new, that that webinar. So with that, I maybe we should switch to Q&A. And we'll come back when the deck is loaded up with the last final thoughts. Um, All right, cool. Oh, go ahead, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, Billy, I'm not sure. Maybe I spoke too soon.
So are, should we move to Q&A, Billy? How does this um, work? If you guys want to finish up, then we can move over to Q&A. OK. So the last piece that we were going to talk about was just if you're interested and you think that that you are you know, committed and excited about growing and improving your processes as well, we've, we've got information about how to get a demo of Solar Success and check it out. And then shall we move to let's go let's go ahead and do the Q and A then. We'll put up the demo deck when it's ready. So Billy, okay. do you have a question um, that we should Yeah, we've got some stuff on deck for one second. All right. So yeah, we're gonna open up the floor for some questions. Remember everyone, continue to submit questions anytime via the Q and A widget at the bottom of your screen. Let's see what we've got here. Um, okay, so how easy is it to add applications that I currently use? That is a great question. So NetSuite is actually able, as that foundation platform, is able to work with any um, REST or XML system. So if, if you've got a system that has an API or is API enabled, it can connect with the NetSuite Solar Success platform. So it is very straightforward in that way. So any modern system can connect. Aaron, is there anything else? Sligo is one of our tools that can help make that run faster so that the users can do it themselves instead of needing technical support. But we haven't run into any limitations where we haven't been able to connect into NetSuite yet. Yeah, Oracle, NetSuite, super flexible. Um, Saligo's so definitely helped out um, with some of the integrations, but um, in general, um, uh, we, we can always make it work. It's it's super flexible, and um, we haven't come into any roadblocks um, in the entirety of, of our integrations and um, connections to other applications. Yep. All right. So what is the typical ROI time period for this kind of solution? Oh, that is a great question as well. So we had anticipated when we initially designed Spiller Success that we would have a three-year ROI period, as that is a normal and good um, return on investment for any kind of equipment that you would be purchasing. What we have found, however, is that Typically, you are getting an ROI within 12 to 18 months. And some people who grow extraordinarily quickly, such as Titan, has a much shorter ROI than even that. So we are looking at very, depending upon your growth rate, it can, you know, if you're at the 17%, it'll be 12 to 18 months typically for an ROI to, to occur. And after that, it's... It's all profit and what it is that you can do with those additional those additional dollars. The if you are growing at more than seventeen percent, then the return on investments are even faster. Okay, great. Uh, so how do partners interact with NetSuite? We have all different kinds of partners that we work with. Um, the largest ones that are logged into NetSuite are our sales partners um, who are generating the sales and then submitting us over over here to Titan where we take it from there and handle all the project management and installation. But we built out dashboards. They're logging into NetSuite. They're able to see um, queues and updates right on their dashboard of what site surveys are happening this week, what installs are happening this week. They're able to um, view their commissions and accounting information since we're running accounting all through NetSuite. Um, so. Uh, none of our partners um, have to put work into generating their commissions. They're able to automatically receive their commissions um, directly inside of NetSuite. And um, they're able to access their projects. Um, they're able to see the project page that we are, and they're able to go into chat and talk with our employees. Um, kind of across the board, they're, they're working out of NetSuite or um, getting their information out of NetSuite um, in a similar fashion to what we do. Um, 
That being said, we also do integrations with our partners. Um, we send data into their systems through a variety of integration types. Um, so they're able to stay up to date with the current statuses on, um, you know, every time we're going to be vi visiting the homeowner's house to um, whenever um, we're asking them for tasks. So if we're asking them to get updated con contracts or anything like that, they're able to view those queues and get that information um, immediately and work through their processes quicker too. All right. Um, is Titan using the full NetSuite service, or do you use other applications that integrate it with with it, like uh, HCM? So, so go ahead, Jen. So Titan is using the the full NetSuite, but NetSuite does have modules. So they do have they are doing payroll processing, for instance, separately. And that is a choice that, that that they've made. It's an option. There is a suite people piece that you can have within that suite that can do HR information services, or you can do them separately with integrations or reports, depending upon your preferences. For Titan, the the process of, of moving their existing payroll systems didn't have as much of an ROI in the, the reporting and way of getting the data out that they needed for that from NetSuite was easy enough that it, it wasn't worth the effort. So we, we left that in place. But the option to do it as a complete suite exists. Do you have any other thoughts about that, Aaron? Um, yeah, we use, we use NetSuite for the um, majority of what we do and what our employees are working on. Um, uh, there's, there's small areas that um, aren't currently in, in NetSuite, but um, you know, we're not opposed to, as, as we did our transition this year, um, we are not opposed to looking into those things in the future and continuing to transition more onto NetSuite. So. It's, it's a matter of priority and phase. That question. Yeah. Okay. Um, does Titan Solar Power include sustainability within its business strategy? And do you use NetSuite to track KPIs on reducing your business uh, business processes uh, environmental impact? Yeah, so we we have some some large initiatives um, that we're planning with some groups um, for 2021. Um, I I'd leave that to other people in our company to further answer, but. Um, Besides that, we, we definitely are, um, you know, taking the information out of NetSuite to make better decisions, you know, um, similar to how Justin was talking about reducing truck rolls, not only saves us costs, has better environmental impacts, um, different things that we're doing within NetSuite to increase the efficiencies definitely have um, effect on environmental impact. So we're always conscious of that, but um, as far as the other things that, that are more in depth that we're gonna be doing, I'll, I'll leave that to our PR team. So, and Justin, I'm wondering if you've got any comments or thoughts about that one. Um, I certainly know that you've done the PPE process. Yeah, I mean, I don't, uh, I don't have anything on that towards that. Like Aaron said, I think that the sales should be answering that question from the company. But um, yeah, that's stay neutral on that one. <laughs> Sustainability is clear, clearly a priority um, within the context of what is efficient and reasonable. And increasing efficiencies re does reduce that cost, which increases sustainability inherently because you're getting more done with fewer resources. Okay. So, and, um, yeah, go ahead, sorry. Well, so I was wondering if the slide deck was um, how the technicalities were working. Do you know how that is, Billy? Because we're still seeing the little red sign. But if you're good. Yeah. I, hmm? Everything seems to be coming up on my end. Um, I'm oh. not sure what you guys are seeing. But, um, yeah. Okay. So if we're looking at slide 22... I was hoping that we might look at slide 24 and 
I wanted to thank everyone for coming today and learning about what we were able to do with Titan Solar Power in building these leaderboards and gamifying the processes to create an environment where continuous improvement and innovation is just part of the culture and built in. Makes it a, a really fun place to work and a fun team to work with and and eliminated those growth barriers so that they're on track for over 100% growth this year and there isn't any end in sight in their ability to continue to grow. All right, great. So I will just reiterate what Jan said and say thank you to everyone for attending today. Um, that's all the time we have. If you have any additional unanswered questions, feel free to contact our presenters on your own. This webinar will be shared with all registrants, so you may view it again at your convenience. And um, I'd like to thank Jan, Aaron, and Justin for being here and for Blue Banyan for sponsoring today's webinar. And thank you to everyone in the audience for participating. I hope you enjoyed our presentation, and we invite you to join us for more Solar Power World webinars in the future. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Billy. Thanks.